Mercer. Matt Pangrak. Welcome to the Call A Weekly Sport Fishing Debate Show. And this week, we're going to talk about no waypoints going into tournaments. Keep our call. Starting an event with absolutely zero waypoints, Panger. Where are you going with this? Well, this was re- there was recently a tournament on Lake sure. Lanier that the Touring Anglers Association put on, and one of the stipulations was uh, the competitors had to had to prove that their graphs did not have any waypoints on them before their ride around. There was actually no practice in the event either, just a little bit of a ride around. So everybody started day one with no waypoints on their graphs, and and you and I have both been in a lot of top tournament level boats and there's hundreds of waypoints on some of these bodies there's thousands of waypoints amassed over decades and decades but they zeroed them so yeah there's a lot of discussion around technology now and do we need to know where the waypoints are do we need to be able to run to this stuff i mean if everybody starts without any on day one of the tournament isn't that more of a pure competition that takes a lot of of history and things that have happened over the past two decades out of place so we get who's best on this body of water for these four days in theory yes it does but but okay first of all there's no pre-fish for that event so right. it does make sense. I mean, you're 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 going to, and I do like that element. I love being up. I, I imagine, you know, in the elite series, I'd love to watch them crack the code. I'd love to watch them put the actual game plan together right in front of my very eyes. But that being said, it'd be a lot more skillful to watch a golfer not walk down the court. Walk. To, I almost called it a court. That got me in trouble with the <laughs> the golf folks walk down the fairway and not have somebody like when you compare what pro anglers, and I think people point a lot of fingers to, Oh, they're getting information or they're this, that, the other thing. I mean, there's so many rules around that. If you compare them to other people in other professions, it is incredible what professional anglers are able to do. Waypoints are no waypoints. To travel from one side of the country to the other side of the country, to continuously catch fish, to continuously perform And you look at golf and I mean, any other sport, there's a coach, there's somebody. Yeah. In golf, they can't drive a cart. That's true. That is very true. They can't use certain size clubs, but they do have a dude whose job is literally to know exactly how far you hit a particular club in this particular wind, in this condition and everything, giving you advice on your way to it, talking you off the ledge when things are going bad, calming you down, doing all sorts of stuff. That pro anglers have to do themselves. That's what makes fishing so much harder, I think. I think that's why you see pro anglers, when they're injured, it's so much harder to perform injured in a, in professional fishing because it's eight hours. It's eight hours where you're out there by yourself making the decisions by yourself, and I don't care whose waypoints I've got. I'm not making the decisions that that person has. I think there's an element to it that would be cool because I want to see them un figure out things, but I also think that the whole they're all getting information is just one of those things that's wrong with the industry. Does it happen? Sure, it's happened. You'd be a fool to, I mean, people will rob a 7-Eleven for $500. If you don't think that people have taken liberties and advances in, in tournaments over the years, it happens. But at the end of the day, they gotta catch them. And I think it's one of those things that is weird about fishing, and I'm gonna get some hate for this. But you go to watch golf and you're like, look at the sound that it makes when Tiger hits that ball. I've heard from golfers. It's just, it's so amazing. But in angling, a lot of our crowd thinks that they could be on that stage. And in some situations, they do. I mean, we celebrate that, the classic. But I just feel at some point, people have to give the pros credit for what they are and 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 how they fish and and how incredible it is what they pull off literally from coast to coast. So I mean I got off topic totally. I think it'd be cool to do it to see them without waypoints. I think there's some natural anglers but I also think that if you're going to have way, no waypoints then you might as well have no prefish because if you can't waypoint during your prefish why are you prefishing? You know what I mean like you <laughs> sure you're going to but, you know, and the golfers, 
That same analogy, they walk the course. They play mm -hmm. practice rounds so they can figure out exactly, not just with their advisor who walks down the court. Why do I keep calling it the court? Walks down the fairway with them. But they they put in that practice. and I, I see I, what you're saying. I mean, I'm confused on the whole thing. I see what you're saying. I'm going to take a different path okay. on it. I knew because you Because what I'm going to say is uh, a lot of this sport also comes down to time on the water and history. Mm -hmm. And over the, the course of the last 55 to 60 years of fishing, experience, knowledge, time on the water has played into success and longevity for professional anglers. So you should be rewarded if you've been to Toledo Bend 15 times over the course of your career. And when people hear waypoints, I think they automatically, especially in this day and age, go straight to what people have given them. Yeah. What they might have legally obtained that was not theirs, that is a chip that goes into the unit and now they have locations to fish. What isn't talked about are the 20 years of experience and the 10 or 15 times that you've been to a body of water where you are building a database on that that will benefit you for the rest of your career. What you found, what you've earned, what you have put into those units, the game plan that you have put together based on your experiences, the waypoints that you hit that that angler has found based on skill. And I don't think it's right to tell those people, oh, well, you have to erase all of that too and start with nothing when they're in that arena and at that level because of their experience. And now they have the opportunity for that to pay off where, yeah, a rookie is going to have that. But guess what? You've earned that right having been on tour for that many years, having spent that many days away from home, having fished all those tournaments on that body of water to have a more deeper knowledge should you choose it and to have that repertoire of waypoints that you've built. So that is why I'm calling it. I agree with you. I mean, especially the event, I think it's a total different thing, but, but for, and that's the reason that you have these highly talked about rookies that are literally living on the road because they're trying to catch up to the 15 years of knowledge that anglers have, and there's only one way they can catch up, and that's right now. And I and mm -hmm. I think that when people point fingers at those rookies as well, and they're like, "Well, look at how much pre practice they're putting in." Yeah, well, guess what? If I opened a sandwich store and I was 21, it was my new business. I mean, Panger, you're a prime example. You took over BTL in the last year. How much extra time have you put into BTL? That you three years ago now, but who's well, counting? Okay, anyways. I mean, it's time is yeah, no, I know. But you know what it, I'm it's, saying? Like it's this your last job, eighty, a hundred hour work weeks. Yeah, and you and you don't. It planned to be this way your whole life. You know what I mean? Like you do think at some point you're going to slow down and you're going to be able to reap the benefits of the time put in. But that's when every business, every and that is what it is. It's a business. Everybody when they get into a new sport, a new business. They're putting in a ton of time, and and I agree with you that the the rewards should be, and I I think that we simplify. I guess the long short and up the point that I was trying to make, we simplify what a waypoint is, and we act like you can just go buy this waypoint. And clearly, we're in a time where there's people selling waypoints, but buying a waypoint, Kevin Van Dam could give me the chips from his damn boat and put them in my boat and say, "Here's all my waypoints. I'm not going to have the same finishes as Kevin Van Dam." But I'm man enough to admit that I don't know that everybody else is. It, it's you can't buy a lot. You know, the biggest thing when you talk to guys in the elite series and you really start to break it down, the one thing that seems to stand out to me, and, and it's exactly like you hear in hockey, in the NFL and different things. It's speed. It's the speed that decisions are made. It's the speed that adjustments are made. And that's. We have to give anglers credit where credit's due, so. I'm, uh, I'm, You're I'm calling, calling it as it. well. Yeah, I'm calling. We've agreed way too many on these, but I feel like we've reached way different paths to agree. Yeah, it's, it's a, been a windy road. It is what it is. Yeah, I bet you some people would disagree with us, and and uh, I would encourage those people to tell us about it in the comics, comments, comics, comments. God, dude, I'm tired. <laughs> Keeper, call. Let us know.